Hello and welcome back to the Genesis Designs Modelling Bench. I am here starting on this Zvezda 148 scale SU57 and the first uh, little segment of this video I have as I mentioned in the inbox review the surface finish on th uh, this upper fuselage part was quite rough so the first thing I did was I primed this part with some primer. Now for that I've used this, this is automotive aerosol primer, any old automotive aerosol primer will do, um, a lot of people like to use the old Halfords Grey, uh, you could also of course use Mr Surfacer or Tamiya Surface Primer, anything like that will do just fine, um, two or three coats sprayed on wet but not heavily. Uh, you have to be careful spraying any of these products on too heavily even the Tamiya um, there is a likelihood that it it may cause some surface damage to the plastic if you put too much on so do be careful with that so yeah a couple of coats of that it is already smoothed it out some but that will be sanded back down uh, once it's had a day or two to fully harden off so after that was done I quickly put together the cockpit parts which wasn't uh, which didn't take very long at all not much to it, added a throttle lever, glued this um, joystick and its pedestal together, glued several parts together to form the seat and here's the instrument panel. And then I've painted these parts. Now I took absolutely no notice of the instructions here. Instructions recommended uh, Tamiya XF80 which is just grey. Uh, I did a quick google and it appears that the cockpits on these things are painted in standard Russian vomit turquoise but which I have here as an MRP but that would never match the um, Quinter panel decals that I have so I mixed um, some paint myself I used XF23 as a base and I added a little bit of X4 which is just blue gloss blue to make this colour up which isn't a perfect match for these Quinters, but it's close enough. It just needs to be close enough that it doesn't look absolutely ludicrous when these are attached and you know similar tones. So that was sprayed onto all of the pertinent areas, including the rear part of the cockpit decking, the internal area. I used LP5 Tamiya Lacquer Paint 5 for the uh, combing and for the seat, and then I've coated all of that with a very light coat of X22 which as always was thinned with Mr Colour Thinner uh, just to seal the finish and get ready to put these decals on which is what I'm going to move on to doing next so then let's look at these Quinter decals shall we interior 3D decals so I read the instructions and it mentions super glue, PVA glue various glues um, but Primarily these are designed to work just like decals are. Um, so here we go. I've, as you can see I've already done one side and so far so good. I filled my water vessel with warm water as directed. And they really don't take very long to soak off the backing sheet at all. Goes on the dashboard. Just show you just how easy these are to use. They're on. Um, surprisingly soft once they come off the backing sheet they feel quite firm um, on the backing sheet um, and I was a bit concerned particularly with the seat ones that they'd be a bit difficult to use but I'm hopefully just about to show you that that is not the case boom and they fit absolutely beautifully where they're supposed to go go that's that one and you can see also that my self mixed color isn't exactly 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 right there is a slight difference but um, I think it's close enough for government work just gently pressing these down with the side of the tweezer end just 
it mentions in the instructions not to use solvents which which would be a little bit it would reek of overkill anyway to put flat panel decals onto a flat panel but it does say not to use them because because you run the risk of removing the colour which would not be optimal and there we go look at that several seconds of effort later and this side panels are fitted perfectly around this throttle quadrant detail and there it was done it's so quick so easy and it isn't it isn't as crisp visually probably as really good paintwork or even maybe pre-coloured etch is but I'm going to take a punt and say it's good enough I think what I'll do is I will mix using my palette just mix a tiny bit of paint and just brush along this top edge to take that white highlight out of, out of things but yeah there you go they were <laughs> absurdly easy to use and, and, and look at that for result let's, let's um, I'll put that there let's uh, do the instrument panel as well while we're here I mean this the instrument panel has several smaller pieces Let, let's see um, if, we, if they all fit just as well I can always edit it or delete it if it doesn't work right <laughs> just call me the BBC give that a second to soak see the instructions are quite clear here just while that's soaking it's very easy each one's numbered see exactly where they have to go if you can't figure it out from the shapes little piece of tissue just press that one down there we go very very easy to pick up with the tweezers obviously because they're much thicker than your average decal but they do provide really nice relief to the surface um, as in three dimensional shape which is one thing that I personally feel is extremely lacking with, with coloured photo etch it can look really effective but especially on a larger scale build which this isn't particularly but the etched pieces are really much too thin and much too flat it's fine in small scale 70 second and so on but in the larger scales I think it's quite noticeable that sometimes that the the, um, the panels just do look too too flat And that, what's that? Colour me impressed. I, I like this. Um, it is a bit modelling by numbers, yes. <laughs> I'm not going to argue that point, but you know, for a quick result in no time, you know, that you've seen how long that just took. This is six minutes in, and I've done basically done the entire cockpit. That's it. There. Sorted. Awesome stuff. And here we are then with these uh, Quinter cockpit decals all in place and done. And I think it's fair to say that it was quite a success. Please focus. There we go. So there's the tub with some there's rudder pedals and I fitted the control column 
or the joystick pedestal, whatever. There we go. Quite a nice effect, the instrument panel, as you already saw it. World's slowest focusing camera, sorry. Um, I'm, I like the way the, the gloss is rendered on the screens there. And then the, the ejection seat, which was trickier than the rest um, because of the contours involved. So the material, when you take it off the backing sheet, once it's soaked, it's really very flexible. It's quite quite easy to get it to conform onto, onto the seat, as you can see it there. But as soon as there's very much contour involved, it didn't really want to stick. And this is the HUD. It's got a little screen on it. I should touch up around the edges of that in black. Yeah, the 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 decals, the stickiness of them is, um, I want to say marginal. So with this seat, because of the the contours and the fact that the seat cushion here was is bent quite severely, it it, it they didn't want to stay attached with the adhesive on the decals alone. So I used this, the ammo of Mig Ultra Glue, which is effectively the same as the um the gator glue that you can gator grip that you can get it's like a pva gel but it's a bit stickier than pva and i used that just to assist these decals in sticking and the reason i chose this is because being water-based it isn't uh going to damage the decal in any way and it dries clear as well so if there's any uh squeezes out or gets anywhere it's, you, you won't see it so and that's worked very well i found you could apply it to the back of the decal whilst it was still wet and then that was fine, that worked. Or just let the decal dry off a touch and then put a spot of glue in place and it's, it sticks it down really, really easily because it's not there's not much spring in these, unlike Photo Etch, the belts in particular. There's not much spring in them, so once they're stuck, they're stuck. So, yes, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. As a as a first try and as an as a experiment, I think that's gone quite nicely. And I think for a simple quick easy relatively affordable upgrade um they're spot on the money and i can see why people are, are quite so excited about them there just reset the camera position there so building then with these cockpit parts complete i can fit this tub into the top half of the fuselage which is here now you may remember I primed this and, and here I can show you I've started to rub some of it down and you can visually see the texture that was in the plastic by looking at the patterns of where the primer has rubbed through and you can also see the big advantage with using these automotive style primers here in, in how this is so perfectly feathered in there are no areas where this primer is peeling away or or anything like that it is very firmly adhered to the plastic so you can rub all the way through it without any worries in any way which is what I've been doing but but yeah you can see from the texture how sort of rough the surface of the molding was which is a bit strange but the tub cockpit tub just pops into the bottom like this and it'd be very very easy should you be inclined to fit the seat afterward as well so that's that but before I get onto that I need to do some work on this lower fuselage now i said at the beginning of this that i would i want to do some wing mounted armament because the rockets are so cool but i thought it was only fair since it was included to quickly put together the internal weapons bay to show you what that looks like and here it is with its six rockets i had an excellent comment from a gentleman on on the channel on the inbox review where he said that this armaments bay is entirely fictional and in fact um, so is the armament itself because the real aircraft can only carry four rockets not six um, but because of the secrecy of this aircraft understandably so um, it's a Vesda don't have the details to work with so this weapons bay although present on the real thing the structure of it and everything is it's fictional but it still looks cool I think you'll agree but I'm not using it anyway because I want wing mounted armament. So I have to fit this one piece 
door it has a slot here this is for the stand if you use this Vesta stand that's where you'd open it up to fit it and we've got an arrow molded in to show you which way is forward so you put it in place and it it does fit pretty damn well however it's slightly too long I also had to cut away and I'll show you on the instructions because I've already done it there are two tabs on the edge of that Bombay which are here and they're for fitting this divider when using the internal Bombay but these tabs interfere with the fit of the single door it doesn't have relief for them so I've trimmed those off to allow the door to fit but it is still a tiny bit long you can get both ends in but when you do it it bulges up in the middle so I'm thinking it's going to be very difficult to do much with it at the back or the front although actually that's fitting okay now actually I might just glue it I was thinking I was thinking about cutting it in the middle to shorten it some and I think I will just to allow both ends to fit properly without inducing stresses but either way that needs to be fitted and glued before I carry on and indeed the intake assemblies these are two parts each there is a seam down there but I'm not going to worry about it if, uh, if you guys don't tell anyone then I won't either but these fit into the lower fuselage half too and some nice little moulded in places for them to sit like so they fit like that and they form part of that main landing gear bay so there's a few bits and pieces just to sort out before I start putting the fuselage halves together uh, and I'll come back when I've done that okay a little bit later and we're pretty much ready to join these massive fuselage halves now and I'll just take you through what we've done now this uh, plate in the belly here I was obviously I said before I was concerned it seemed a bit too long but I got away with it. I did I did have it in mind to cut it across the middle so that I could take a bit out so it would be short enough. But in fact, what I did in the end was chamfer away the, this corner here of the plate, which gave it a bit more, it, it was able to push into the gap, into the slot a bit more and then just glued it from the front to the back and it's all squeezed in okay. And as you can see, it's not 100% perfect but it is good enough I think so that was that now then the intakes so I'd already joined the two main parts together and to that there's the addition of this squiggly piece which forms uh, the rest of the undercarriage bay and then some intake fan detail and then these front front place front parts which form these lips here which are very nice actually uh, and that all fitted together like clockwork and I know that's not a phrase and you can't see down there but the fan faces are really nice and I sprayed those with uh, OK Extreme Metal Duralumin which has got a slightly sort of goldish tinge to it, it's quite a nice colour so I popped, I popped that onto those and just glued them onto the back and then the intake trunks were glued into position without any bother at all and it all does fit together absolutely beautifully uh, the wheel bays themselves and the insides of the intakes the instructions call for XF80 which is a grey colour so I, I don't have that colour in so I, I just randomly used LP36 which is dark ghost grey no no excuses but you can't really see down there I'm not too concerned about it and I've done that around the wheelbase too so with that being said that leaves these pieces ready to put together now the instructions did not mention nose weight at all I I added some because I'd rather put some in unnecessarily than find that I needed it and I didn't put it in and it wouldn't be the first time that instructions haven't mentioned it when it's been required so I have here some fishing line weights I got these from the local decathlon store cost a couple of quid 
Uh, it's quite a nice little set as all different sized uh, sort of split weights which you can crush down into flat pellets if you need to. But what I did here was I just tipped a load in and I've secured them with PVA glue. And then this here is some plasticine. Uh, I will use plasticine both top and bottom uh, to block it all up in such a way that if this glue ever fails at any point uh, the, the nose the weight won't end up just flapping about inside the fuselage because it will be restrained by the plasticine so that's why that's there and I will put some more in, in this top half until it presses down and, and it forms a sort of a seal so with that in place there's a very definite nose heaviness about the model which to be honest I don't think it probably needs it because the main the main gear legs are attached all the way back here it'd probably be okay but as I say I'd rather put some in and it not really have been necessary than the other way around um, in the cockpit area I have fitted the seat uh, the seat is, it sits on this pedestal that was moulded in and it's quite a tight fit to the point where it literally clicks into position when it goes but that's just held in with a touch of Tamiya standard liquid cement so um, I will finish packing up this nose with uh, plasticine until I'm happy with it and then I'll be back in a moment and uh, we'll fix these fuselage halves together with some CA glue here we go then let's get this fuselage together this whole model together so what I'm doing here I've got some super glue accelerator just blue tack that down to the desk so that I can't knock it over too easily and I'm going to go about this um, essentially I've done obviously done a fair bit of test fitting uh, as I always do and it's only this portion of the nose and this portion of the rear part that are going to have seam areas that are even visible so I will be using super glue for the front and rear and liquid cement around the wings which again I tend to do I think super glue is less than ideal for wing joints unless you're working with a particularly big model where you've got a decent amount of gluing area and whatnot so this is a Loctite 495 it's what I tend to use and all I'm going to do nothing very sophisticated about this I'm going to apply it quite liberally in the style of ye olde tube glue from back when we were bands around the entirety of that nose joint so that's both sides with a liberal coating and it is going to squeeze out but that's fine that's what we want now line it up you do have to work reasonably quickly here if you don't get everything in place soon enough you're going to end up having to laboriously scrape all that super glue back off your jointing face that's going to need a good old squeeze because of the plasticine we made to block in those lead weights there we go and that is together when i'm working off camera again apologies it is a big model just make sure everything's lined up and this is the only downside for me anyway really with working with uh, super glue as a joint glue like this is you do need to work quite quickly now that excess that has squeezed out perhaps just see it shining away there I'm just going to wipe it with this piece of tissue and that just takes away the big lumps but what we have got is that anywhere where there's a slight gap or split or crack however you want to put it any slight mismatch of the seam it is now by default completely full of super glue it does go off quite quickly by itself but I'm going to just paint a bit of accelerator along there just to get it completely done not too important on this model because it does fit quite well there's not a great deal of stress on this joint but on a model where you're having to squeeze things into place as you'll have seen in the tornado videos actually it's 
it's useful to use the accelerator just to speed things along a bit if you're trying to hold something in place so at the back then I can still open all this out quite significantly so what I shall do at this point I have a piece of plastic packaging that's taped to my desk it's out of shot it's just an old brass in packet taped to the desk and I just tip some super glue out on that and I'm going to use a cocktail stick which I'm dipping right now and then pop the glue in with the cocktail stick to this joint area and we're going to work around it a bit at a time that's the first part squeeze it down that click was the locating pin just popping into its hole Difficult not to work off camera with this because it's such a large model. Desks, the desk doesn't actually go back far enough for me to keep it all in shot. I can see there that no matter how hard I squeeze, that's got a slight overlap and a slight gap on it. So what I'm doing is just straight away, right now at this stage, just adding. And this is just raw naked super glue, there's no talc in this. Just add that to the surface. Because it's because it's gone on top of the accelerator that I just used, that is gonna go off in absolutely no time at all. Let's try and repeat the process so you can actually see what I'm doing. On this side. do tend to use quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of glue it is a completely end of the day this is a completely mechanical joint this this glue it doesn't doesn't melt the plastic in any way so you need to make sure you get enough in there once that's holding by itself again there's little or no pressure on this joint really bit of accelerator And again on this side, same deal. It's not a bad fit as such, but there's a sort of a, a little ledge that's left by the way the joint is formed. And I'm just going to overwrite that with this glue straight off. And the last bit then is this beak at the back, which will be dealt with in exactly the same way, but I'm not going to just show you the same thing over and over again. So let's just look quickly at the way this, the wing halves interact and indeed the front area of this intake. You probably can't really see because this is already quite tightly together, but the lower wing doesn't join at the leading edge which is nice because it's a very 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 sharp leading edge and it would be an awkward join to deal with it actually joins in just after it along a panel line or potentially a panel line I think it probably isn't actually and all the way around the wing just joins in board which is really nice because if you're so inclined you can glue this and hold this and you won't have to deal, uh, address the, the seam line at all you can just completely leave it and obviously the easiest way to, to glue this by a mile is with the Tamiya Extra Thin and that is what I will use not being shy with it, I'm not going nuts because it will melt everything but at the same time you need to get enough in there to ensure that you're going to glue it adequately this is a very large model it is quite heavy even without the nose weight so 
if you're going to be lifting it by the wings, which is inevitably what will happen, you need to make sure that they're adequately cemented together. I'm just applying the lightest of pressure here and holding the lower panel so that it's flush with this join here. If you just push it, push it tight, it, it does sit very slightly below the level of the upper wing surface moulding, so we don't want that, preferably. Although the glue that's on the surface with this, this is the, this is ordinary extra thin, but this is the old fashioned extra thin that you can't buy anymore, so it does flash off quite quickly. But although the surface glue flashes off very quickly, the actual meat of it inside the joint takes a little while to fully cure. Just be wary of that. There you go. That's what the joint looks like and it's just glued. I think it's fair to say that that's within the realms of something that you could just leave as it is, maybe a light sand. But anyhow, that just shows you how quickly you can work with super glue. And this is almost a finished model, just like that, <laughs> a few minutes after I start gluing it. So I'm going to finish gluing that and I'll be back with a roundup later. Alrighty then, we've pretty much got construction complete here. I'm almost ready to start adding the last few bits before getting onto paint. There's a couple of things I wanted to show you first. Um, firstly, underneath, intakes. So, there are two extra parts to add to the front here. There's this piece, this part here, and then a side plate there. Uh, this side has already been dealt with, but I just wanted to show you what that looked like before I started to sand it, and as you can see, no messing, that fits. It's really, I really like the way Zvezd dealt with these intakes. They're quite, they are quite complicated, quite a tricky shape to deal with, but they've dealt with it really rather well. Despite this being quite a simplified kit, the way they've gone about achieving those shapes is really quite impressive, and it does work. There's a little bit of. Um, filling work just gone into that side there that edge you can see the line there just above that grill detail but nothing nothing much at all you can see generally speaking the fit of this kit has been really very very good now this leaning edge we did speak quickly about that when I glued it together is very much the kind of thing that you could just absolutely ignore it turn a blind eye and not touch it at all as you can see here I did sort it out a, a little bit of Mr. Surfacer and a touch of Tamiya Basic and just sanded that out and rescribed it. Not a big deal at all. On the uh, upper surfaces then, finished sanding down all the primer. Um, the unfortunate downside of that and the way I attacked that whole process is that I did have to rescribe the entire upper surface because the combination of the fact that the scribing was quite shallow in the first place, a little indistinct even, and then the primer filled it up a bit, but also the primer I used did etch the surface of the kit a little, uh, because it is an automotive, quite an aggressive solvent in modelling terms. Uh, so that has all been rescribed just to clear out that surface detail, sharpen it all up a little bit, and, th and that did take a while, not going to lie. Uh, tail fins go into these holes at the back as you can see there's a little infill panel there that's gone into it and the, the tail fins themselves have this half circle detail idea being that when you put them in into position they don't lock in but there's a distinct obvious central position which is fine and it's a nice touch but it's it's really quite unnecessary because it's quite easy to see when the fin is straight and when it isn't. As it happens, my fins will be being posed like this, or like this. They'll be offset anyway. I've got a, 
I found a great picture online of one of these under tow. Well, this is that aircraft, in fact, under tow, and the flying controls are all over the place, and I'm going to replicate that. But there's no need for these to be fitted yet, anyway. Um, in the cockpit, see the seats in, and I've fitted the hood. No idea if that hood's accurate or not. Um, but it does need to go into position before you fit, I think. It'd be a major struggle to get that into position once the windscreen's on, to be honest. So I fitted it first. Speaking of the transparencies, I masked them and sprayed the internal colour on the inside. Radical, I know. It's a nice bit of internal detail on the main canopy. But if you look at it from the outside, you can see that I actually sprayed this in a grey colour first. And the reason I did that is I found a, a photograph online, again this exact aircraft, and the canopy is in the darker grey colour. But all the way around the framing you could see the seal between the, the perspex and the frame, which is a pale grey. So what I did when I masked this, I deliberately went a little bit past where I should have and sprayed the pale grey first, so that when I now mask this for the external colour you'll be able to see kind of through the transparency and you'll see the grey so it'll look like the seal but without the let's face it hassle of trying to mask it separately so that's the canopies and they do fit really rather well I did find the windscreen is slightly narrow but it squishes down no bother the canopy which I now can't fit closed because I have this contraption in here for the open but I did find it was all a little bit long and you, you might need to just sand the faces a bit to get that perfect when it comes to it so other parts wise I've been very busy here's the, the jet nozzles you get two options in the kit now rather unnecessarily really they give you two two whole back ends um, but I thought maybe one was open one was closed but they're actually not they're the same the difference is one is angled and one is not. This aircraft obviously has thrust vectoring so you can go with straight nozzles or angled nozzles. I'm going for angled because it's more interesting. Uh, and this is the, the sort of turbine area and the beginning of the jet pipe and it, it fits, it butts up to the um, nozzle which is great except that when you fit the exhaust in place it sits on a little uh, molded in channel back there and as you can see there protrudes very slightly so you'd think then that the exhaust slots into that gap but it doesn't it still butts and you get left with this going on which is not ideal so the way I'm going to fix that or the way I have fixed that is I've literally just cut that cut that ledge off the exhaust and I'll paint paint the parts glue it together like this and then just shove the whole lot in and that'll fit fine I've tested it and it works uh, worthy of note also delightful little plastic flame holder for your afterburner sits in there like that and um, th these aren't the most detailed exhaust you're ever going to see in a kit but they're very very adequate indeed especially at the price point of this kit uh, final thing with these if we, if we can focus in on that you see the one on the right is unmodified the one on the left I've rescribed or should I say scribed all of that detail in because it's very indistinct on the kit part this is a, a moulding limitation it isn't really something you can have a big go as Vesda for okie dokie so Weapons wise, I'm going to use where's the here we go the big rockets and some air to air. This this is one piece molded. Quite impressive. The fins are kind of thick but they're not absurdly thick and the detail is a bit compromised by the fact that it's been molded in one piece. But overall that's pretty decent. These I don't know what these missiles are, I'm very sorry. For those of you that want detailed insight and expertise, this is not the place because I know nothing about Russian aircraft and even less about the uh, rockets that they use. But 
whatever this missile is it's just the coolest looking thing I've ever seen it, it, it couldn't be more flash Gordon if it tried it looks like a space rocket but yeah a pair of those and a pair of air to airs in common with the wings themselves the pylons are stuck together in such a way that there is no seam on the front and rear edges it's actually on the side so that's nice very little cleanup required there what else is there tail planes here it is again it's that easy to ignore seam on the bottom they come with an optional angled portion that fits here so you have the option of uh, sort of an in-flight mode where it's level like this or I'm going with this drooped option so when it's fitted it sort of replicates the sort of hinging portion and the last little bits to talk about really are the undercarriage units some of the stockiest main legs I've ever seen and again the detail is, is it's adequate you get three parts the main leg is all moulded in one complete with the torque link big steady and a retraction arm that's obviously going to break the linkage so that the leg can fold up these were placed into position on the model lovely solid fixings here as well there you go clicks into place lined up and then glue added so that everything aligns properly see it's got a nice forward sweep on it and that sits into place quite happily the nose leg does have a little more going on nose leg steering jacks enormous landing lights that's the backing plate for the landing lights and a big old trailing arm assembly the majority of that again was moulded in one piece complete with this door really quite impressive and then the two nose wheel steering jacks and the landing light added along with this top section lovely bit of moulding and then the wheels and tyres now the wheels themselves the details really quite decent really not bad at all very good but as always seemingly with injection moulded wheels that really distinct and really obvious radi radial tread that aircraft tyres do have it, it's quite missing it's it's subtly there on the main wheel but the nose wheel's just got nothing especially by the time you've cleared up the seam because these are all in two halves there's no flat moulded in I'll probably cut one in because of uh, my modelling OCD I shouldn't because this is meant to be from the box but we'll see and then you do get this quite delightful separate brake unit which uh, attaches to the main landing gear but then sits into the wheel like this so aside from the the lack of tread these wheels and tyres are they're not a weak point at all I would not see them as a weak point they're very very good and that pretty much sums up the build of this thing I mean being basically in two parts helps obviously but I th you know that complication is magnified when you start this is what I've got left to clean up you start looking at um, all the weapons and bits and pieces it's it's not complex at all uh, and the fit is excellent throughout really not had any issues to speak of with fit whatsoever um, the only thing that has slowed this down or made it in any way a chore was that rough 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 surface texture on this upper surface uh, some might be able to ignore it but it really wasn't for me something I could ignore so it did add quite a few hours of work sanding all this primer out and then rescribing the whole upper surface um, quite a chore honestly and it does make a mess as well but on the whole a really really easy build really really nicely put together really nicely molded no massive mold seams on anything no flash very few ejector pin marks very few sink marks really 
excellent effort from Zvezda. Um, obviously it's simplified uh, the price point reflects that so I think we can forgive it that simplification um, but for part one on the build I think we'll call it we'll call it at this point I only have to just clean up that intake and fit the windscreen and I'm good to go to start painting and I, I want to cover the painting in part two because we'll be using masks and doing some jiggery pokery with the airbrush to make the uh, surface finish look a little more interesting although I'm not going to go nuts with weathering because the aircraft in, in reality isn't that old but we'll talk about that in the next one so that's it for part one the build of Zvezda's 148th SU57 kit um, I'll see you in part two which will be the painting and finishing until then look after yourselves look after each other and Genesis out